After the verdict, you could almost see smoke coming out of their ears. Bill Baroni's defense attorney fuming. I don't have anything specifically to say about the governor, but I will say this. Uh, in keeping with the disgrace that was this trial, one of the things that the U.S. Attorney's Office should be ashamed of is where it decided to draw the line on who to charge and who not to charge. We indicted only the people who we believed we had evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. Baroni, the former deputy director at the Port Authority, insisted he was duped by the government's primary witness, David Wildstein, and believed the lanes were closed for a traffic study. I am innocent of these charges. Bridget Ann Kelly, Christie's former deputy chief of staff, who sent the now infamous email, time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee, was visibly shaken. I said at the time of my opening and my summation that I felt she was a scapegoat, and I feel now she's a scapegoat. From the beginning, Christie's denied involvement. Today, saying those people were terminated by me, and today the jury affirms that decision by also holding them responsible for their own conduct. The real question is whether or not the U.S. Attorney's Office is going to go after uh, the governor. Was there a deliberate interference in interstate commerce? Was there a personal or political gain? And if so, is it actionable under federal law? I don't know if he knew about it. I don't. But his $10 million report from his lawyers would suggest he didn't. The mayor of Fort Lee, who refused to support Christie for re-election, igniting Bridgegate, said had Kelly and Baroni not been convicted, other public officials would have been encouraged to participate in this type of activity. At the federal courthouse in Newark, Meg Baker, CBS 2 News.